What's up? What's happening, folks? Welcome back to the channel, Sports, Life, and Politics TV. I'm Samuel Koppel, YouTube's number one couch detective, and I'm here for the news. And over a month ago, there was a case of Jack Teixeira, a young man who's in the United States Air Force, who had leaked classified documents. And you can see in the top corner on the right, I made a video on it. Jack Teixeira, leaked classified documents, the real life war games. If you don't know about war games, it was a movie from the 80s. About a young man who was hacking classified uh, uh, United States military uh, uh, documents and ended up almost causing a nuclear war. Now, this young man right here comes from a military family and background. And I said in this video right here, I said, something ain't right. How in the hell was he able to keep getting all this information? Nobody was saying nothing or doing nothing. How was none of this stuff being given away? And I don't be damned. Something was rotten in Denmark. And come to find out, the whole unit where he was uh, working out of, the whole thing was rotten to the core. And there, most of the people who were involved were like him. He came across as a young man who just was a gamer. That's how they played it. But I knew it was a little bit deeper than that. Now they're saying he was an anti-Semite, a racist, and everything and all the rest of the above that you could think of. Well, let's take a look at the clip. Massachusetts judge decided the 21-year-old airman Jack Teixeira will stay behind bars while awaiting trial. Teixeira charged with leaking troves of sensitive classified documents online in addition he was allegedly not particularly shy about his love of guns and racist and anti-Semitic views. Now Air Force memo show his supervisors had previously warned him three times to stop deep diving into classified material. They even offered to train him on a new job after his first two warnings. See, this just... Now, I don't use the term white privilege very often on this channel. I would say damn near never. I probably use it once or twice since I have this channel, but I, I rarely use it. But... For them to say we're warning him about deep diving, that should automatically set off bells and alarms that this young man could either be a spy, he could be indulging in treason, treason, uh, he could be doing all type of chicanery that obviously dealing with classified material that would make you think that they would start watching him. And but for some reason, he was given three warnings. This is <laughs> some of the shit that I cover. It's, it's, it's mind boggling. But as you can see, these things are really happening. Carol's outside the courthouse in Worcester, Massachusetts. Jason, what was the judge's reasoning for not letting him out? Well, at one point, Jake, during the proceeding, uh, the judge in this case, David Hennessy, he raised his voice and said that this is a defendant who simply did not care about who he so, so if he came across as a person who cared, they would have let him out? Somebody who lacked, who, who leaked all this classified information out to the public and the world while the United States of, more, uh, of America is in a proxy war with the Ukraine and you have China and Taiwan going at it, you have all this shit in the uh, South China Sea and and you tell me that this is actually a conversation of talking about letting this young man out. Either this is white privilege or they wanted this information out there. That's the only thing I can come up with. It just makes no sense. And as a result of that, letting him out on bail presented too much of a risk to the United States. He said the following. He said records show a profound breach of the defendant's word that he would protect information and the security of the United States. The judge in this case, David Hennessy, also went on to talk about who this defendant had hurt by releasing those troves of, of classified documents online, saying, who did he put at risk? He can make a, a list. Hey, and I've seen several pictures of this young man, and I could be wrong, but he looks like either an incel or a homosexual. I don't know. Either or, but there's no doubt about this young man. He's... Something ain't right with him. He looked like the future mass shooter. There's no doubt about that. As long as a phone book, soldiers, medical personnel, Ukrainian personnel, Ukrainian soldiers, 
We don't know how many people he put at risk. You want to all just say the government has... Uh, we do know how many people he put at risk. A whole damn lot. <laughs> we don't know how many. Like you need a Pacific. You know, he put actually, he put 7,717 people at risk. Motherfucker, who cares what, how, what the number is? The number is massive. That's the point. He put a lot of people at risk. What the hell are you talking about? We don't know exactly. That's what I mean. Quit soft showing this shit. They, this young man has indulged in treason. Treason. And this young man has gave up classified documents when he took an oath and swore not to, you know, not to, uh, to, to protect and serve this, his country. And he just did all the opposite. So this whole thing is just, I find it, this, this is just ridiculous. You this information, you put the United States at serious risk. And the defendant's response was, I don't give up expletive. You can fill it in the... <laughs> So the white boy basically said, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a damn about none of that shit. I did it and I'll do it again. Yeah, they need to put him under the jail. Why is they even talking about whether they would or won't or why they giving a reason not letting him out? Boy, I bet you this is a motherfucking Mexican. They locked his ass up under the jail. A Chinaman who was in the middle. Oh, he'd have never got out. And there'd never be no talk about what happened and who did what. They just locked his ass up. Now, the defense, for its part, had argued that the defendant in this case did not try to flee when he's arrested. He also brought up, uh, the defendant's uh, uh, attorney had also brought up that uh, his parents had put up their homes as collateral. But the judge, he acknowledged that, saying, I'm aware of all that. But at the end of the day, releasing him just presented too great a risk. Jay, Jason, did the judge it's, say anything? It sounded like they wanted to release this young man, too. That's how it sounds to me. But I think the public outcry would have been so loud that you let this young man out that they was like, no. So they just basically yelled out why they left him in there. But I do think 100% for a fact that they wanted to let him out, but they just couldn't. About to share his uh, extremist views. He did. I mean, he did. This was something that was brought up during during the hearing as well, when we're talking about extremist views, remember uh, he had presented online these very extremist views, doing searches for about mass shootings, uh, using racial slurs, using ethnic slurs, things like that. And it just... Hey, listen to me. Like I said, a future mass shooter. There's no doubt about that. About this obsession that he had with guns. He said some people like guns, some people like coins. There is nothing wrong with that, but based on the defendant's writings, the searches, there appears to be an unhealthy component to that. And I want to bring up one other point, Jake, if I may. Uh, the judge at one point also had indicated that he had struggled with part of this, saying that he knew or that he really felt uh, if he had let him out on bail that this defendant... I told you, they wanted to let him out. I just They wanted to let this young man out. Let's hear that one more time also had indicated that he had struggled with part of this, saying that he knew or that he really felt uh, if he had let him out on bail that this defendant in all likelihood would have adhered to the conditions of the bail, but then he said the following. He said, but then when I look at him and I think, what if I'm wrong? What are the consequences of my decision? Okay. All right, seeing as Jason Carroll outside the courthouse in Worcester, man, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Jack to share it wasn't exactly hiding his far-right views of the many warning signs the Washington Post obtained. This video shows him spewing vile anti-Semitic and extremist views while firing his gun. Post also interviewed friends of Tashira who say he used the term race war quite often, even referred to himself as racist. You have to realize, some of these little type of white boys, they feel good in hiding in these chats and hiding in online. If they actually ran into a group of black people, or even one black man, man to man, these people are cowards. Yeah, a lot of these people are real, true cowards in every sense of the word. Yeah, it's easy to talk tough when you got a gun in your hand. It's easy to be tough when you hide no line and all that old shit. But when these people be like this and talk this type of shit, they not tough. These mass, so every motherfucker time I'm going to do a mass shooting, I want a race war. No, you don't. You coward ass. You know you don't. You don't want no fucking race war. 
the, for the white man to have a race war in the United States would be the end of his empire. It would, his reign would be over. See, the white people who are actually at the top, who actually control and run the country, they know that. But you have these type of white boys who get the deep dive in these type of ideologies and really get to bask in all of this racism and all of these different uh, patterns of thought that they get to indulge in online, that they really begin to believe this shit. This is to any white person who had just so happened to make it this far in this video. A race war will be, that would mean the end of the United States as you know it. It would never be the same. Not only would it never be the same, you would lose power. And in the world, you never get power back. It was one time the Mongols was the strongest. Genghis Khan and the Mongols was the strongest motherfuckers on the planet. They ain't been back in power since. It was a time the Greeks was the strongest. They ain't had it since. It was a time when the Romans, they ain't had it since. It was a time when the Carthaginians had it. They ain't had it since. The British Empire. You can go on and on in list of empires. And once they had it, when the Egyptians had it, they never had it again. If you white, you're supposed to be trying to hold on to power at all costs. You, you can't afford a war with Negroes. You might think it's easily winnable, but it would destroy the fabric of your country. And you'll never be the same. And you would have to hope that God is on your side in that war. So, you know... I just want to go over that clip. I'm, I think I'll make a part two because this video kind of goes on a little bit longer. And there's some more stuff in this video I want to go over. So I'm going to make a part two to this. But this has been Sports Life and Politics TV. I'm Samuel Koppel, YouTube's number one couch detective. I'm here for the news. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. I just took your ass. The last thing a white boy will really want is a race war ride. Peace.